Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be doing the solutions for questions seven and eight of the January 2023 CXE Mathematics Paper 2. We begin by looking at question seven, which is pattern and sequence. We have um, three diagrams that are part of a pattern. Notice that they are squares, and inside of those squares, we have smaller unit squares. So this would be a square of three units, four units, five units, and we should draw the next one, which would be a square of six units. And of course, there is the shaded section in there that we need to fill in. So of course, you should draw your diagram to reflect the pattern that's happening there. Then we move to the table, and we have some values to fill in in the table. And at the end of the, form of the, of the table, we are required to write a formula for each column. So, um, looking at the first one, the number of colored squares, the perimeter of the figure, the figure being the square, uh, the bigger square that is, and then the total number of squares. So, the total number of squares being the colored squares and the white squares. So, let's go back and look at that. Notice that you have shaded squares and you have white ones. So the total number of squares would be the number of squares inside the diagram, the little ones, number of little squares. Okay, getting back here, let's start with the number of colored squares here. The first number in the sequence is five, then seven, then nine. So as you realize here, we're adding two. And two is what we call in this case a common difference. So that common difference becomes useful in finding what the pattern is means now that we're going to take that common difference of 2 and multiply this 1. So let's multiply 2 times 1. 2 times 1 would give us 2. But notice that our answer here is 5, which would mean that we need to add something to make it up to 5, and that something there would be a plus 3. So we are taking this common difference of 2, multiplying the figure number, and in multiplying the figure number, we add 3 and we get 5. Now once we do that, let's try it again and see if the pattern holds. So if the pattern holds, then we can use that as our pattern. So here we say two times two is four, Multiply, add three, we get seven. So let's write it out, two times two is four, and four plus three gives us seven, so the pattern holds. Two times three is six, six plus three is nine. And so by the time we get down to n, then we realize that our pattern is 2n plus 3. That is whatever is here, we multiply it by 2 and add 3. Here now, the perimeter of the figure, which really is just the perimeter of the square, the larger square. And what we see here using the differences in the numbers, we start at 12, then the next one is 16, then 20. So we are going up by 4 here. So we're going to take that 4, same way we did this one, multiply it by the figure number. 4 times 1 would be 4, but we do not have 4 here, which means that we're going to have to add something to make it up to 12. That something there is 8. And then let's try it and see if it works again. Multiply by 4. 4 to is 8. 8 plus 12, 8 plus 8 would give us 16. So it works again. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus over 8 would give us 20. And so by the time we get here to n, we realize that our pattern there is 4 times whatever this number is. And add 8. And this column now, looking at it, we notice that we have 1 plus 2 square equal 9. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 4. That's 16. Notice something that the 2 here is constant. And 1, 2, 3. The 1, 2, 3 corresponds with the 1, 2, 3 here. So, whatever this is, we know that we're going to have n here, and we're going to add 2 square, and that will give us the total number of squares. So, let's go back and fill in now the missing stuff. So, for 11, the 11th figure, then we know that it's 2 times that number plus 3. So let's multiply that. 2 times 11 plus 3. 2 times 11, there it's 22. 22 plus 3, of course, gives us 25. So that's our result there. And over here, we know that it's n plus 2 square. n is 11. So 11 plus 2 would give us 13. 
as 13 square and 13 square is um, 169. Then here we have some things to write in. Because of this number n here, 23, we know that this will be 23. So these numbers are the same coming down 1, 2, 3. So when we get to here, it has to be 23 over there. So this column takes this n and multiply it by 4 and then add 8. So we can take 23 and multiply it by 4 and then add 8 to our result. So 4 3s are 12. 4 2 is 8 and 1 9. So 92 add 8. That gives us 100. So this should be 100. And we are basically finished with our table. So the last part of this question would say how many white squares are in figure 11. So remember with the diagram, we have colored squares and then we have white squares. So this column calculates the number of colored squares. This one calculates the number of total number of squares. So for the 11th figure, we have 169 squares in total. And we have 25 colored squares. So the number of white squares is going to be 169 minus 25. And doing subtraction here, we end up with 144. So that's that. 144 white squares in the 11th figure. Moving on to our next question. Question 8, algebra functions, relations, and graphs. Here we have three functions, f of x is 4x minus 1, g of x is x squared minus 5, and h of x is 3 to the x. We are asked here to find um, g of x minus 2. Normally we are given simpler stuff to find, such as g of 2. And with g of 2, you know that you should plug 2 into the g function. So we would get 2 squared minus 5. It's the same thing that we're going to do here, just that we're going to put in x minus 2 instead of just 2. So g of x is equal to x squared minus 5. And so g of x minus 2 means that we're going to have x minus 2, replacing the x with x minus 2. Square minus 5. It says in its simplest form, which kind of suggests that you need to multiply it out. So let's multiply it out. x minus 2 square means x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus 5. And of course, you should remember how to multiply this out. Um, x times x there gives you x square. x times a minus 2 gives you a minus 2x. And here gives you another minus 2x. And here gives you a plus 4. And of course, the minus 5 right there. And then tidying it up, we have x squared minus 4x, and 4 take away 5 is minus 1, and that would be our result. So the same way that you'd substitute 2 into that function and work it out is the same way we substitute x minus 2 and simplify. Continuing, we have f inverse of 11. Now, again, finding f of 11, which is a totally different thing from this. Notice the minus 1 there. f of 11 would say Put 11 into f, work it out and see what you get. Um, when you put 11 into, into, into f, we get 4 times 11 is um, minus 1. That's 44 minus 1, which is 43. Now, this question is not asking what this is asking. This is asking what number should you put in this function so that at the end you get um, 11. In this one, when we put 11 in, into that function, we get 43. Now it's asking us here, what do you put in this so that you get 11 at the end, like that? Now, to do that, we simply take our function and make it equal to 11. So 4x minus 1 is equal to 11. We want to know what number to put in this function so that when we work it out, we get 11 at the end. So again, when we put 11 into that function, um, I probably should have used a different number, but when we use 11, put, put 11 into that function, it gives us 43. We want to find what number do we put in this function so that we get 11 at the end of it. Now we realize here that we have a simple equation, so we're just going to go ahead and solve it. 
4x is equal to 11 plus 1, 4x is 12, and therefore dividing x is equal to 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So it's telling us now that if we put 3 into this function, we are going to get 11 at the end, just as we put 11 into the function and got 43 at the end. So put 3 into this, 4 times 3 would be 12, and 12 minus 1 here gives us back the 11. So f inverse of 11 means what number should I put in my function to get 11 at the end to make it equal to 11. Determine the value of h of h of 1. No, this is a composite value. So we want to work out h of h of 1. You could find the composite function h of h, but there's no need to do that. We can simply find h of 1 first, and that means we're going to substitute 1 into h of x. Now h of x is equal to 3 to the x, so h of 1 is equal to 3 to the 1, and 3 to the 1 is 3. Now h of h of 1, we have just work out, worked out h of 1 and h of 1 is 3. So this is now saying find h of 3, since h of 1 there is 3. And h of 3 simply means no, we're going to put back 3 into the function, which means h of 3 is equal to 3 to the third power. And that, of course, is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. For the next part, we're given a quadratic function to fill in some numbers on the table. So we have the domain, we have the range with two numbers missing. And to find our missing numbers, we take our domain values and plug them in to this function here. So f of x is x squared minus x minus 2. And we're going to substitute negative 2. So here we have negative 2 squared. That's 4. Minus negative 2. That's a plus 2 minus 2, and of course, 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 gives us back 4. When we substitute 0 into, into the function, 0 squared minus 0 minus 2 gives us negative 2. So we can just write our negative 2 there, and we're finished filling it out. So these numbers now form coordinate pairs that we're going to be needing to draw our graph, which says use a scale of 2 centimeters to 1 unit on both axes. So let us go set up our axis, 2 centimeters to 1. So here we have negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, etc. And 1, 1 there, 2, 3, and 4, 2 centimeters to 1 unit on both axes, negative 1 here and negative 2 there, negative 3 there, so to speak. So let us look at our values, negative 2 to 4. Negative 2 to 4 would be here. That's our point. Um, going back, negative 1 to 0, and 0 to negative 2. So negative 1 to 0 would be right there, and 0 to negative 2 would be right there. Of course, we have 1 to negative 2 as well. 2 to 0, and 3 to 4. Those are the values, if I'm remembering them correctly. Yes, 0 to negative 2, 1 to negative 2, 2 to 0, and 3 to 4. And so we need to draw a smooth curve through these points. And please remember, it's a curve. So you should use your, your free hand to draw it. I'm going to try to draw it as best as I can, given that I'm using a digital device. Um, uh, that part of it is getting messed up already. So let's just tidy this up. So this one is going to go through here. I'm going to tidy it up in a little bit. Uh -huh. Go down. through there, come back up, it's not a very pretty graph, but giving you the idea of what it should look like. 
let me tidy this up a little bit that is not there and this piece on the inside so there we go so our graph looks something like that of course drawing it on paper should make it a lot easier um, but I'm using a digital pen right now and a digital pen is actually a little difficult to get it as smooth as possible um, but there we go that's our that's our um, that's our quadratic graph and I think that brings us to the end of the question as well so one last thing to label it as f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 2 and this of course is your y-axis and that is your x-axis thank you for watching remember you can find past and other practice papers along with other solutions to other years question other years papers on the website at csegmathtutor.com and of course continue to work hard and best luck in your exams